Hey folks, this is Bailey from Dankless Wargaming. Hey, this is Heath with Team Table of White. And welcome to the Path to Redemption, the Warhammer 40,000 Dark Angels podcast, where our aim is to help Dark Angels players improve their tactical and hobby skills in order to enjoy this wonderful hobby of ours. Uh, in this special bonus bonus episode that covers more post-Adepticon reveals on WarhammerCommunity.com, we will start with the hottest of hot takes, the new data slate, all right, where Inner Circle is dead, and long live the Ravenwing. But you have a side or note not. here, Heath. Yeah, um, or not, because Codex Warfare changed, and that was what made the Ravenwing, you know, S plus tier. So we'll talk about it. All right, we get attached to our heroes in 10th edition, and finally, things are looking beefier mm. than a Longhorn Ranch in, tenth, in the 10th edition motor pool. So, yep, so, all them tech been hitting the gym. They oh, did yeah. not skip leg day or arm day or chat. This is the whole thing. So the total yeah. package, the TTP. So much bonus episode, man. So the, so GW has, has gotten well within our command and control decision loop. Uh, and we, <laughs> so we're, we're probably just gonna, you know, this, this episode has to some extent invalidated some of the stuff we've talked about in you know, previous bonus episodes we've re we've recorded but not released. So we're just going to put it all out there and you guys can see the progression um, and hopefully enjoy it and comment. So there you go. Anyway, there let's get go. cracking. What you got? All right. So in the data slate, a couple of quick changes. Mm -hmm. What I thought was interesting in the Arcs of Omen uh, objectives, they've moved to Pour the Witch from Warpcraft to Purge the Enemy. Hmm. Okay. So I guess that kind of makes sense. That's a yeah. smaller, smaller thing. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Plus, it gets because it mm -hmm. always seemed kind of silly that like the one Warpcraft thing doesn't actually involve Warpcraft at all. So it makes sense to me. Uh, then looking at Codex Warfare, this was a big change. Uh, you can now score a max of five VP per doctrine. So it used to be uncapped, and that's where people like myself were running lots of heavy weapons on all of my vehicles and bikes blowing everything up, scoring two points per kill, and maxing the secondary out as fast as possible. Well, mm -hmm. now you can only get yeah. five points. But the scoring mechanism is the same. literally yesterday. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But I think this, this just opens up the list to either A, running vehicles that have more than one type of weapon, or more fun running more units and or vehicles that have the capacity to fight in all three doctrines. So, like, running a Dreadnought that has, like, a heavy weapon gun and then you know they've got storm bolters and stuff on them and then they got a close combat weapon so you're potentially looking at what is that four points on a dreadnought if it kills three mm -hmm. things in three different doctrines that's four points off one dreadnought that's not too bad well as long as it's if it's in all the doctrines so if you use the two cp adaptive strategy stratagem and he becomes in all doctrines that just kills a bunch of stuff you know that could be very worthwhile for you but that was the case previously yeah, yeah this definitely is targeted at uh, Dark Angel and Iron Hands players uh, who who may have abused this interaction a little bit with our chapter's particular affinity for heavy weapons. Uh, sorry, oh, I'm, I'm talking sorry. about like not like, sorry, like... absolutely not sorry. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm not talking sorry. about like built like progressing mm -hmm. through all three, like through the game. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You can definitely like and listen. Dark Angels are good in all the do in all doctrines. They're good in all. Yeah. Of them. Right. Um, like even even the a Deathwing squad. Yeah, yeah. The the Devastators, you know, or the Devastator Doctrine scoring you two points instead of one was pretty was pretty broke. Yeah. Um, so yeah, honestly, like so they've they've attacked your rate your Ravenwing, you know, S tierness, and they've attacked the Deathwing S tierness because uh yeah, inner circle is now a bad thing to have because it just prevents you from falling back sometimes. The, right, the so all transhuman is gone. It's it's a very yeah, it's um, a very simple edit. They said delete the fourth bullet point from the inner circle ability, and that's the ability okay. that reads: each time an attack is made against this unit, if this unit has the infantry keyword, an unmodified wound roll of one to three always fails, irrespective of any abilities that weapon or the model making that attack may have. Which is good because this is one of the things that I hated as a judge, because there's parts in the rule book that specifically say attackers rule when you have things that say you can versus things that say you can't like always wound on a two versus this there is a part in the rule book that says that you can supersedes you can't and then every example of that i've had judged mm. since then 
says no this is an exception you can't this was like the exception and they're like yeah you you the the, the can'ts in this case override the can and i'm like but that's not what the rule book is. so i'm just glad that this is in a way i'm glad this is gone because this was the one example in the rule book um, that was like specifically said no we're not doing what the rule book says and it was very frustrating for me to adjudicate and explain this to players I would just like to state that uh, the official position of Path to Redemption is that we liked the transhuman ability. It was very good. No, yeah, but, no, I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying a, that it's not good. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying I didn't like having to explain a, to people why this one rule, as a judge, this one rule didn't interact with the rest of the game the way every other rule like it had to. From a game design standpoint, um, like absolutes are really hard to deal with. Yeah, right. Because you have two. Yeah, yeah. So, so obviously there. Okay. So let's. Um, you know, there's been a lot of a lot of salt, a lot of salty tears. Um, so much tears. It's uh, on 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 Dark Angels social media today. But you know, uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, of the Lion, you know the you know he is ultimately a pragmatist, and you're going to deal the hand, work with the hand you've been dealt. So, does this mean that Deathwing is dead? I don't think so. Now, are you going to run a Charlie Andre 44 Terminator list? That is probably not a great plan. Um, however, I still think that one unit of big, big lobby unit of Deathwing Terminators is pretty, is pretty tasty. Look, a, a two up, sorry, one up, zero up in cover, four up in vol, minus one damage with the pen and remembrance and a six up feeling of pain is still plenty, plenty, you know, durable. That's pretty good. Yeah, you lose transhuman. Okay, they're going to die faster. That is absolutely true. Um, if you're not like skewing into that as your sole mechanic, then sure. But ten of these guys are you know sitting in the middle of the board are still gonna they're still gonna take a punch real well, right? They damage output real well because you give them plus one to hit with your chapter ancient. They get plus one hit for standing still. They're still gonna hit on twos, and they're still pretty cheap at three hundred thirty points for a full squad of ten. Um, so I would say, look, play a mixed wing list, right? And that yep. does seem to be what 10th edition is pushing us towards is a mixed wing list. So one unit of 10, right? That way you're not losing out on all the other benefits, right? Now there is no benefit to going full death wing. You're not, you know, completely negating your opponent's ability to, to shoot you with high strength or, or fight you with high strength weapons, right? So, so take a bunch of everything. Um, I think one big unit is still going to give a lot of people pause, right? As long as you're absolutely 100% need the pen and remembers now, uh, in my opinion, to make them durable enough to to be worth it. But in fact, he also gives you plus one to hit in combat is also great. So uh, I'll still take him. I'll still, I'll still take a unit of 10 in, in most in all my lists for the rest of 10th edition, probably um, until we until I get some practice with the lion. What, what do you think? Uh, Bailey? Well, this is where like you go in, you're gonna see at least some variety in the terms of what that unit looks like, because I think mm -hmm. now with the change, especially with Codex Warfare, instead of just having the ten Thunder Hammer Storm Shield and two missile launchers, I still I think that maybe you see the uh, the Relic Terminators with Combi Bolter and Lightning Claw come back because you drop ten of those guys and you give them Deathwing Assault, so they have plus one to wound, and the, and somebody has T three bodies, you're wounding out, you're coming in, you can give them plus one to hit, you can give them plus you give them plus one to wound, you fire into T3 bodies, even T4 bodies, you're dropping 40 shots into something with a rapid fire weapon. So if it's slightly armored, like if it's a guardsman squad or some cultists, uh, something like that, you're picking it up. So that's a point for Codex Warfare. And then you get, if, you know, say you fail your charge, your guys somehow survive, or a couple of them survive going to the next turn, or they then charge into something with lightning claws, then they pick that up, and now you're scored two points. Like, I feel like you, there's like, mm. and then I feel like there's still some points mechanics, or you could just run regular Deathwing squad and take power fists and bolters and still spit out a lot of shots. I feel like there's, I'm, there's still I'm not, still... I also, I also see where you could run storm shields, thunder hammers, and then you, and then you put the missile launchers on there still, and then you put them on the board. You do the thing you're talking about. They missile launcher something to death for two points. Then they end up charging something once you're in the assault doctrine and they start killing things, and then they're, they're still, there's still points placed, because it's, it's, I think the Git Codex to work still, you're going to have to have units that operate in all and can, can eff effectively and efficiently kill something in every single doctrine. 
and Terminators do yeah. that. So I don't think they're completely gone because Terminators, you can build them to do, you know, with assault cannons, heavy, you know, plasma cannons, heavy flamers, thunder hammers, storm shields, lightning claws, chain fists. They can, you can build them to kill just about anything from one squad. This might be, you know, like if you're really trying to make Codex work for work and you have Terminators, this might be an argument to use um, uh, brilliant strategists again. If Azrael's next right. to him, like you can move yourself. It's like, okay, so assume you go second on turn one, you're not going to get a shot. Or assume you go first. Turn one, you're not going to get a shot at anything. Turn two, you will, but you're just trying to move towards your doctor to support your other stuff. Um, which I don't know, maybe not. Like, because do, do you move out of Devastator Doctrine if you're not going to, if you haven't maxed the points for it? Um, it's right. kind of, that's a, that's, that's a hard, that's a hard, you know, road to hoe. I'm not sure. Um, so Codex Warfare becomes a very situational choice about when I can pick it, right? Because I have to have access to the stuff that's going to give me the points, right? Something that's going to come right at me. They're going to break cover on turn one, right? And I'm going to have enough units I can pick up with the with the tools I have in my toolbox. Right. Um, so it, it's really going to be tough to do. Um, but yeah, but uh, I, I still think the Thunderhammer Storm Shield, because like, I really think that you're going to need that plus one armor save of the four-up and volt to make the Terminators durable enough to survive you know, a, a late ninth edition battlefield, right? And the Pen of Remembrance. But like I said, I think 10 Terminators with, right. you know, in the middle of the board is going to be pretty durable still. So... Um, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at on it. Uh, there's really not much else to say about it when I mean, we all know how to buff Terminators these days. Um, just don't lean into it quite as hard and try and pull other parts of your codex out. Um, uh, if you I don't try have the two Talon Masters thing. Uh, if you don't have any Terminators right now or you need some specific builds, uh, hit eBay, hit Facebook groups, sell groups right <laughs> That's now. That's a good point. I thought you were about to say, they're making new models. I'm like, come on, bro. But like, no, no, no. Yeah, there's probably a lot of really... Deathwing yeah. painted stuff hitting eBay right about now. Yeah, That's a good point. well, and go, since there are, especially go, since yeah. there are new models coming, like people know the new ones are coming, so they're like, mm -hmm. "Well, I want to get rid of my old, you know, my old ones that are no longer like super transhuman. I'll sell, you know, half of them that I don't need at a, at a, at a discount rate, and someone can pick them up. So if you need them, just because you're trying to, you know, flesh out that collection, they're available. <laughs> I'm sure somebody's got them. Alrighty. Yep. So that's the data slate that dropped today. Heath, kudos to you for saying, let's not film this too late, early in the week because we want to try and catch we, that data slate the on last, Thursday. <laughs> the last two times, something relevant has come out in the last, like, the day after we recorded, which is why we keep getting caught out. Yeah. So anyway, there we go. Speaking um, of that, we're going to go to the next thing that caught us big time, and that is the data slate for Lionel Johnson has dropped the official daddy, data slate. Big daddy for, himself. So we actually, there's no speculating here. It is, let's see what we got. So here he is. We know the stat line. Let's get into the weapons here. Uh, we have the sword fealty. Nothing changed. We already knew all that. There were no additional abilities for the strike attack. But we do see that's new is we have the Armus Luminous. Uh, and it is a plasma pistol. It is either, it's range 12. It's either pistol 2, strength 4, neg 1, 2 damage. Or pistol 1, strength 8, neg 4, 2 damage. And there's so no... it's a combi plasma pistol. I think it's a combi right. plasma pistol. Yeah. It... Uh, yeah, because you can select one or both. Yeah. Profiles below to make attacks with. Nice. But and there's don't no take a penalty to hit when you do so. <laughs> so and no. And there's no mortal wound. So. No mortal wound mechanic on the plasma side either. Yeah. Yeah. So he basically right. just took uh, he took Azriel's old combi plasma and he wields it as a pistol because he's Pretty a big sweet. daddy. So. All right. Um, uh, Angels of Death. A couple things to comment on here. Yep. Angels of Death. We know Forest, Forest Walk. Walk. We know the Emperor's Shield. Here we go. Now. Here's a new rule. Here's a new rule. Oh. oh. Martial Exemplar. So, at the start of the fight phase, if this unit... Uh, correction. If this model is within engagement range of any enemy units, it can fight first to that phase. So, this isn't quite as good as a fight last effect, but it's still pretty good. Right? Yeah. Um, so... He will fight first, which means if you charge, if the, if the army does multiple charges, you get to fight at the same charge order. Um, so, I'll, and he also has a Primarch of the First Legion, which is an aura. So, while well, a friendly Dark Angel core or Dark Angel character unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, reroll hit rolls of one and wound rolls of one. Nice. 
So how does this check with what our prediction was? That's a good question. I mean, it's very so. I mean, it's very similar to the Gilliman ability, right? It's just not the big so the, aura. So the Gil, so the Gilliman had two auras. Remember, he had yeah. an Ultramarine aura, and then he had an Imperium aura. Right. So the Ultramarine aura was reroll hit rolls for core, and wound rolls of one for core for six okay. inches. So Lion's aura is only hit rolls of one instead of all hit rolls, but applies to core and character, which is very important. And honestly, I'd probably rather have this because two things. Are you ready for this? Two things. One, gotcha. he buffs himself. It. He buffs himself. It's his true. character. So he's swinging 22 attacks with fealty and a sweep. Rerolls all those hits and rerolls all those wounds, right? Or at least the ones. That's real good. Yeah. <laughs> Real good. So two, you put two Talon Masters next to him, and they're gonna do a lot of damage. Yeah, and they're gonna negate gonna buff cover. Those, they're gonna well, they negate cover for Raven Wing Core. Is how the that's no escape fair. ability works. Oh, that's but fine. for themselves, they will reroll the hit rolls of one and the wound rolls of one. So I would expect to just go ahead and budget three, you know, for two Talon Masters and Lionel Johnson. Uh, and that's going to be real good. So then he's got the Watchers, which are the same as Azrael's. He's just got two of them. But if it's a Chaos Psyker, you can re-roll. And actually, I think I, th I do think Azrael has that. Yeah, he, he has that too. It's just he has two Watchers yeah. instead of one, so he gets to do it yeah. twice per game. All right. So then that is uh, that's all the abilities he had. But there is a new Warlord trait. Bailey, yeah. what's his Warlord trait? So if your army is Battleforge, this model must be your Warlord. If more than one model in your army has a rule to this effect, then one of those models must be your Warlord. If this is your Warlord, uh, it has the following Warlord trait. No hiding from the Watchers. In your opponent's movement phase, select one friendly Dark Angels unit within nine inches of this Warlord until the end of the turn. That model is eligible to perform heroic interventions as if it were a character unit and is eligible to perform heroic interventions heroic interventions as if it if it is within six inches horizontally or five inches vertically of an enemy unit and when performing heroic intervention with that unit you can move each model in that unit up to six inches all other rules for heroic interventions still apply this is okay. pretty spicy because especially since it says at the spicy. end or does it say at the end of your opponent's movement phase no it, just it says in your opponent's movement phase which can be at the end yeah, that's including when you're use this. because the reinforcement step is in the movement phase. So once you see everything they have done to move, you can then say, "Okay, here's who's coming to help me." Right, and that can yeah. be that can be the lion himself. Right. Yeah. So I've had I've had a bit of a minute, and I've had a couple. I thought of a couple combos with this. If you'll indulge me briefly, go for it. So. Uh, we are we were slightly concerned when we had the the baseline data the baseline stat line and the weapons about his defensive profile because Emperor's shield isn't great it's not so we were like okay he's gonna have something else right and, you know a, a wound gate right or a damage you know debuff or your know, damage reduction or or or, or feel pain or something right um, there are some people that thought inner circle is gonna happen. That there was never going to happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, Gilman was a monster. He's going to be that, a monster. That, that point is now um, moot, completely. Yeah, moot. and it's and it's irrelevant as of today, anyway. But um, this, I think, this heroic intervention thing is what's going to make that happen. That combined with the martial exemplar, so he's going to fight with his buddies, right? We still don't know if there's a data sheet for you know a lion guard be able to release that tomorrow since we're recording today. But yeah. um, what I, I think April thirteenth, what you're going to April 36 yeah. April 13th at, there you go so god who knows um if you when you charge him in what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to also charge something else and then careful you know like base things so that he can't get swarmed right um the only thing that's really going to threaten him is stuff that has fight on death yeah. so be real careful around world eaters and right Wolfen. and and uh and Wolfen, real careful around Thunder, you know, those, those two. Um, I, so the way you deal with this is you 
if you run into a unit like that, right, his five man Deathwing command squad or his blade guard or whoever's rolling with this guy, they're going to make their charge. And when they and then when they make their charge, they base in, right, and they touch everything that, that they can. So the lion only charges what's on the end of the stack. That way, even if they activate on when they when they activate, they can only fight. You know, they 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 can't move towards him. Right, and if it's something super duper duper killy, like a you know, like a Chaos Terminator or something, or a Wolfen with a Thunder Hammer, um, Lion Unbreakable doesn't require core or character. You can use it yeah. on any Dark Angels unit. So Lionel Johnson can, if he's stacked on the end, and there's a bunch of stuff that's you know keeping other things from you know piling and or consolidating towards him using the three inch consolidate rule, uh, he can just Lion Unbreakable. Only the people that are directly in contact with him can fight. Right, so that's how you're going to protect him in those very niche situations, uh, in in my opinion. So I was previously thinking a Deathwing Command Squad, you know, was going to roll with this guy, right, just to give him some, you know, character screening and be that. But I, once again, they don't have inter- they don't have transhuman anymore. Maybe we'll still do it. I don't know. I, I, I he needs some, yeah, like you're going to need a something to screen him. Uh, he's going to kill anything he touches, <laughs> but. So, so, uh, so you, but that, so is this, this where the screen is then, where he's able to heroically intervene squads towards him? Um, I th- so, yeah, he could you could set him up so that even if someone charges into you, you can heroically intervene into them, right? So yeah, so if if someone gets a charge off on you, yeah. um, once again the exact you know geometry of how that plays out. Because if they make a big charge, right, then or they get a lot of movement, they can just jump on you. And, and wrap you up in the in the charge phase. But if they only get a couple guys in range, you can do your heroic intervention, pile in, right, right. lock them up so that when so they can't you know finish the the pile in towards you. Once again, line and breakable has to be activated at the beginning of the fight phase, and that's gonna that's gonna protect uh protect the lion. So um along that same that's a good point, right? This is that's how it can this can be used reactively. There's another thing you can do. Which is have a judiciar next to him. Oh no. Bring and, and then just yank the, him in and then fight last. And then judiciar. And so there's and and depending on how many CP you want to invest in this, right? You can either yank the judiciar in with no hiding from the watchers, or you can give judiciar uh the the six inch dark angel or the dark angels heroic intervention strategy. The six inch dark angels heroic intervention warlord trait. Which I don't you know what the else name would be of. Useful. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's honor the first, honor of the first, or something. Like honor that. the first legion. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I also see that this would be useful for yoinking in your uh, your reliquary of the repentant Ravenwing character. <gasps> That's brilliant. Oh, I love that. That's really good. Well, um, especially if it's yeah, like your so... apothecary too. Oh, well, can you benefit from the feel no pain from the apothecary? I can't remember. I think it's just infantry. I and... think. So. I don't so, know. If, uh, let, me, monster, let me let me look so that up. Not. Let me I was look that say, up. It'd be a funny way to like yoink him in, so you could give yourself a feel no pain if you really needed it. Uh, or I mean, I'm, I'm gonna look it up and see if he could be healed by that. But um, uh, I have a feeling he that's can. really cool. Yeah, I'm a. Well, we'll we'll check the keywords. But I I think so, if you use um, this to to bring in other buffs, so like yeah, he does the hits and wound rolls. But yeah, if you have a way to bring in the fight last, you know, bring the fight last guy closer to you, bring in the um, the reliquary of the repentant. Uh, I'm trying to think of well, he's a dark angel's unit, right? So you can put Neg one to hit on him with a dark shroud. So if say yeah. you, so yeah. if you knew he could kill something, whatever he was fighting, you knew he could kill him, but it would leave him exposed. You could, yo- I mean, you could just yoink in a tank. I mean, just pick something that would screen him and then make it come closer to him so that when he kills whatever he's fighting, now he's screened again. That's also really clever. Um, so the the survey says, the Apothecary's Combat Restoratives and Narthesium both require Chapter Infantry or Chapter Biker. So okay. he cannot be healed by an Apothecary and he cannot be, uh, you know, feeling pain by the Apothecary. He's That's monster. fair enough. They do not understand Primark Biology. They did not teach that in apothecary school, <laughs> which is understandable. 
Not a whole lot of those running around. Not a whole lot of documentation. Um, okay, so I think we got a co- we've we've really kind of touched on a couple of interesting tactics. Yeah. Um, oh, for sure. How is 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 forest wall going to be useful? What do you think? I mean, if it's your if that's your play style, I think it'll fit in. It's I mean, it's very similar to like where Charlie Andre was talking to us about the Deathwing Champion. Like I played with that Je- Deathwing Champion where he has the reroll bubble of reroll charges out of Deep Strike mm-hmm. and. The whole bring in the bring in the chaplain, canticle of hate, reroll your charges, and it's like if you're if you can roll seven plus with two dice rolls, yeah, it's great. If you can position everything to where you can get into targets you actually want to charge mm-hmm. and not just screens, and you can if you've got the technical skill to make it work, it's great. Uh, if it, you don't, so maybe not. I, 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 I see. Well, go ahead. What I what I see that you could see here, what potentially is um, one of the classic things I see as an issue with the Dark Angels is that you want to bubble around Ezreal with your Hell Blasters or Eradicators or something, and then you you pray to God that Ezreal fights whatever gets too close to them because they can't do it themselves. I think now you have the thing like you're going to have Ezreal giving the four up in and bubble against shooting, and you're going to have your little death ball of shooting. And then being screened by the bigger squads of Hellblasters or whatever is the lion just sitting there, right? And he's the thing that goes, yeah, if you come over here to mess with this death ball, I will eat you alive. Because Ezreal was, I mean, he's Mm. scarier now than what he was, but that always seemed to be the downfall of my Dark Angels infantry death balls is, okay, you got inside the death ball, and the only thing that's kind of scary is Ezreal, but he's not that scary. This guy is scary. Yeah. And he's also so buffing can, that whole death ball. So you can really, if you want to do that, you can build two death balls, right? So you could have right. the Azrael Hellblaster, you know, Azrael plus Hellblaster ball. Um, yeah. And then, you know, and with maybe some, I don't know, I would probably throw, I don't know if eradic- Eradicators or Centurions. Um, right, something like that. Around that. Something like that, right? Uh, I'll have to do the points on that, see how it works out. But but then you can have your two Talon Masters. Or something real fast. Two town masters, a couple of bikes, and then whenever the lion. So then you're like, okay, where am I going to put the lion? And depending on how your opponent moves, you set the lion down, and all that stuff. Just the ravenwing portion of it just jumps over, and those town masters get buffed by the lion, and they sh- they tear stuff up, right? And then his bodyguard teleport. You know, uh, terminators teleport in, right? And maybe you're you don't need Samael, right? So your uh, interrogator chaplain on a bike full throttles over there to move his plus two to charge buff. Right. And now you've got a plus <laughs> that there you go. So plus two to charge, uh, real the lions got reroll charge. And then your terminators are also going to maybe make a charge. And now you've got two talon masters going burr everywhere. Just sweeping the sweeping the right. hills with anti-infantry firepower. And then, so that was always the problem I had with the death ball was that I had one center of mass that everything swarmed right. around. Now you can have two uh, and that both have like a real hard, crunchy center, right? That's going to do a lot of work if you break into it. So um, I don't know. That's kind of the direction I'm thinking. I, I had thought about the, the Azrael thing. I wasn't sure how the points were going to work out, but it could be neat. I'll try it. I'll see what happens. I don't know and what second have... to pick for it, but yeah. Well, <laughs> so. and again, there's always just the we're going to yeehaw out of deep strike with the with, you know it's the chaplain and uh, the lion, and we're just going to yeehaw into whatever's in front of us. I mean, yeah, we got it. We got a prime mark now. We can do these kinds of things, mm-hmm. and we can be brave and and do these things and have a good time if we really want to. So on that on that note, I'm glad you mentioned that. I I'm actually I actually don't really see a whole lot of reason to have an interrogator chaplain with a jump pack anymore because he doesn't have transhuman and he can't get it because he's not primaris. So Raven wing, Raven wing chaplains uh, are back on the board. The, Let's go. the bike chaplain, however, has the mobility. He's got the primaris keyword and he's toughness five and he's got more wounds. So he's going to be harder to interact with from a, uh, just a, a trash fire standpoint. And he's going to have the mobility to move those buffs around, right? Cause he's not going to be a, I, I ran Slaplin Padre of Pain last night uh, and whooped some Eldar. Like very, very James good. R 
died terribly. He was like, you know, she takes away one attack and reduces you and you minus one hit. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna explain to you why none of that's gonna matter. <laughs> yeah, because like, here's the te- here's the teeth of Terra, and I've got like nine attacks anyway, right? And I'm rolling yeah, everything exactly. hits and wounds against you because you're a character. So anyway, but yeah, um, okay. So guys, this guy's not falling, right? You got a prime arc. He's really good, right? That you know n- nothing like I, I'm trying to find your pr- think of a, a a rule that would make him you know durable on a ninth edition battlefield, and they really don't exist. The only thing it would be like a wound gate, right? You'd make yeah. him you'd basically make him a katan, right? Um. And I think, and to, and that would, he'd have to be 380 points for that. Well, and at this point, at this point, that's something to bring up though. Heath is that's the one thing you don't want to charge him into because he has all this power (laughs) and it's completely wasted on those characters. And since he doesn't have it Mm -hmm. himself and he doesn't have perma transhuman, uh, he doesn't, you know, the invuln's only a four. He's only got nine wounds, like a Gazg, a Satan and a Baden. Ab- I mean, Abaddon, they could, yeah. no, they they could clap him right, right back because so sure. they're they're and I'm okay with that because you don't mm-hmm. want to have something that's so like we all hated everybody else having the super powerful thing that we can't kill. I mean, that's why mm-hmm. they just took away all of our Deathwing Terminator or you know they took away Inner Circle to begin with. Uh, you know, it's fine that there's natural counters in the meta. Like that's the whole point of having the meta is like, oh yeah, here's this new thing. Okay, well here are the things that naturally are going to just get eaten alive by it, like a knight or something. But here's the things that are naturally going to have a chance and it'll be those wound gated characters because they don't care how many attacks he has once they take a couple you know, they don't care about uh fealty because once they a... take one hit from fealty, they're not even taking the full effect of it. And they're yeah. like, okay, now I'm gonna clap you back and so that's something to think about uh, going forward. F- ask your opponent if he ha- if they have he or she has that rule in their lost, army, yeah. and don't throw the lion at it. Like just don't. Yeah, that's a you got to prepare the battlefield for that. Um, Phoenix lords aren't that hard to deal with because you can shoot them and yeah. then charge them, and they only have it's a two it's a, a two phase wound gate. Uh, but the your Abaddon's right, your neck, your Catan, that is those things and are really hard to deal with. Catan, let's not forget yeah, my gas. boy Gaz. Yeah, Catan heal right. So if you don't kill yep. them in one turn, they just heal, and that adds a whole other phase, which is a real pain in the butt. Yep. So, um, hey, I I propose that we uh, I think we've covered forgot, this data sheet, we, and let's move on. We okay. didn't we didn't mention the points though. We're just going to say three twenty. Oh, three twenty. Give us the points. Right, three twenty. Quite reasonable, in my opinion. 320, right? We replace this one Terminator squad that you're not taking anymore anyway. There you so, go. Exactly. Yeah, uh, we will than, talk more about this than. guy in the future. Yeah. Um, so we're going to you know, see if we can cover a couple of the more 10th edition things that have come out. Uh, and then like, get Bailey get some sleep because it's late as hell. Hey, man, yeah. And I'm glad yeah. I don't have a big day of work tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But luckily, I don't have to worry about <laughs> my car being on fire like one of my coworkers. So easy day. Oh, easy God. day. Poor guy. All right. Yeah. He's all right, though. We got it taken care of. All right, (laughs) so we're going into characters. So some fun things about characters going to 10th. You can put characters into units again. So you remember remember, uh, 7th edition Heath and previous where you could hide your characters in your units? Actually, no. I never played 7th edition. But I do remember 5th edition, right? You could join characters to units. Characters didn't have near the buffing ability that they did now. Um, So the way they're going to do this, I think, is going to be interesting. Right. So, like, for example, he gave us the Primaris Lieutenant. He's a leader. He or he has core, says core, leader, faction, Oath of Moment. So he's in that Gladius Task Force thing, basically, right? And then mm-hmm. uh, he's got the Tactical Precision. While this model's leading the unit, the weapons equipped by models in this unit have the Lethal Hits ability. And it also says target priority. This model's unit is eligible to shoot and declare a charge in a turn at which it fell back, which is awesome. So- Yes. Uh, lethal hits is basically sixes to hit auto wound. Yep, they got that on. That's, that, that was make, in the yeah. article. Yep. Uh, but interestingly, uh, they tell us what units he's allowed to join. So there's very specific ones. Uh, so he's allowed to join Assault Intercessor Squad, Blade Guard Vets, Hell Blasters, uh, Redacted. Uh, I'm sure you know what that word means, Heath. <laughs> redacted. I'm sure that comes up in your daily life quite frequently. <laughs> it actually do- It actually doesn't. Really. Oh, that's good. That makes, that yeah, makes it, yeah, it means you can yeah. talk about it more. That's good. That's good. Uh, well, Intercessor no, it's squad. Just, it's just, yeah. Intercessor squad and then another redacted unit. So, so there's more to come. That's exciting. Uh, and it says also because he is a lieutenant, he can actually join squads that have 
a captain and a or and or a chat or or a chapter master in it which is cool and then it says if you do and that bodyguard unit is destroyed the leader units attached become separate units with their original starting strengths so i i have a question about that because and this leads into the psychic phase because what happens if my character gets hit with a targeted smite or a sniper weapon and gets wounded the unit the squad dies does that mean my guy automatically heals that's a question i would have on a day one faq based on this wording but maybe we'll, we'll get it somewhere remember, else remember there is no psychic phase so smites like a targeted psychic shooting attack right that's that's so... what i'm saying yeah like what if like, yeah, like I don't the know, ones like... for yeah <sighs> Or if they just there's, target there's the unit. Be, there's going to be wound allocation rules. Like you have to go to one. You have to right. go to the care the unit before they go to the character. That's probably how lookout sir is going to work. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll find so, out. So one of the issues with fifth edition was that wound allocation, like the way you could allocate models, uh, was oh, super yeah. super terrible. It was really bad. Basically, you could allocate wounds. Uh, if, if a model had a different piece of war, different war gear than anything else, you could allocate wounds to them individually. So the tactic was you would take a big unit of knob bikers. Yep. They all had different war gear. So they would all take two wounds each before any of them died. Right. Um, so that's where the. Yep. You I've have heard to kill stories. the whole model. Yeah. Oh, God. It was bad. Anyway. So um, that is what the character stuff is looking like there's also this thing called lone operative yep which we have it has been confirmed that the lion is going to have which means they cannot be targeted by range attacks unless the attacker is within 12 inches which is not hard to do right so if you're yep. basically if you're you can shoot over someone's lookout sir if you're within 12 inches which is kind of dangerous so maybe we need more information on how that's going to work because i have some concerns yeah, we just got the line. I don't want to put him right back in the box. I don't want him to die. Yeah, I don't want to put him. Yeah. So, all right. Um, last thing we'll talk about today is vehicles, right? The tech this greens and systems time to gym. Uh, they've been bolting a lot of armor on. So the basically the standard, you know, brackets for toughness, like five was like, you know, vehicles were anywhere from five to eight, right? And I think I've seen nine like once. And, you know, six was a light vehicle, seven was a medium vehicle, eight was a heavy vehicle, yep. and nine was like a Titan. Um, well, now, Rhino's Storm Speeders are Toughness 9. <laughs> so, yep. Toughness 9 is the new Toughness 6 and 7, or is, is the old Toughness 6 and 7, right? Yep. And something that actually had heavy armor, like the Gladiator Valiants, right? Gladiators were used to be tough, were Toughness 8, or is now Toughness 10. Repulsors are Toughness 12, Amazing! I'm so glad I just bought And they bought have already, <laughs> and they have already confirmed that the 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 usual toughness uh, to strength wounding mechanics are going to work. They did say that all the vehicle or all, correction, all the weapon strengths have been adjusted to take this into account. So I don't know if that means last cans are going to be toughness twelve or strength twelve. I'm not sure. I but, have one um, right here one, on the, on the Rhino data slate. Uh, the Hunter Seeker missile went from strength eight to strength fourteen. Well, there you go. All right. Good, well spotted. Oh, and the the, the rhino self repairs again. He gets a wound back. Yeah. And and he has. Uh, they did say that um, vehicles going to get firing ports again. So it used to be able to pop the top on a rhino, and two models inside could shoot out. Right. So apparently that's coming back. Don't know exactly how it's going to work or how many, but Hellblaster, Impulsor, Party Bus, oh, Hop Top, oh, yeah, you know, let it all fly. Um. Yes, that's going to be great. So, all right. Um, one other thing to note here is that uh, they're they're using the objective control stat to help out here. So a rhino has OC two, so one rhino will will overwhelm one terminator. A storm speeder has OC three, and a repulsor has OC five. So that repulsor counts for like for something, right? Yeah. On the, on on the, on the objective, right? So that's interesting. So that's good. Still got 16 wounds with, uh, with a three up save. Toughness 12 is a big number. Um, so really it just sounds like, cause we already saw that bolters are still strength four. So they're really just expanding the range of what the, 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 the gulf, right? The gap between the normal anti-tank and the normal anti-infantry weapon, right? Which does kind of make sense. <laughs> so, uh, you right. should be able to shoot a, an anti-infantry gun at a, at a, a medium tank and expect to do damage. 
you know, like, yeah, maybe you'll get like, you'll shoot out some optics or some, you know, vents or, you know, a commander hatch or something like that. But right. it, you shouldn't be wounding a, an APC on a five plus with a, with a, a regular infantry weapon. So um kind of glad to see that. I think that's good. That will hopefully make vehicles a little more relevant again. Because the stuff that kills vehicles in ninth edition isn't like, you know, la- concentrated las cannon fire. Well, I guess from Advec it is, right? It's stuff like freaking Dire Avengers blade storming into you. Yeah, 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 right. It's just rolling, rolling buckets and buckets of dice, right? That that gets a minus three AP and auto wounds or something like that. So there are still some auto wound mechanics. We'll see how it goes, but they appear to have considered the problem how to make vehicles t- durable again with this type of game mechanic, and just just doubling all the numbers. Maybe that worked. <laughs> so I don't well, know. and then there was something else in the article. It's important. Notice there's no uh, um, brackets. And they mentioned in the article right oh, at the right. bottom yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, that basically you're going to start seeing penalties to hit rolls once they're reduced to one third of their starting wounds. So you, you're not going to see degradating at the first like third bracket. You're going to see it at the bottom third bracket. So you're going to have high power, high efficiency vehicles through most of their lifespan until they're like really, really dead. They're in real bad shape. Yeah. So it used to be the, the standard, the pattern was. 50% of your wounds, right? So you, you break at 50% of your wounds, you degrade one. And then at 25%, you degrade to, to, to tier three, right? Um, so now if you're saying it's just two thirds good, one third bad, dead, uh, maybe that'll make them a little more, a little more useful again. It is interesting that they say that you don't lose speed when you degrade. You just lose hitting right. power, right? So well, that it- may be something to be concerned about. But, it also hmm. takes the stratagems that people have that where they go, oh, my vehicle now s- operates at max efficiency, even though it's not. Like, you can just take that. You don't really need that in the game anymore if these vehicles all have you the same thing, the basically, the yeah, entire yeah, yeah. time. So, yeah. And uh, I'm or somebody maybe, that remembers you know, Land Raiders like being like this big, scary thing. Like, you were kind of a tool if you brought a Land Raider back in the day. And if you brought two <laughs> Land Raiders, like, oh. people were like, I'm not playing with you. And and to fir- play eighth and ninth, <laughs> we're like, if you brought a land raider, people are like, "Yo, dog, uh, chub, chub, where- what's up?" <laughs> uh, unless they were chaos You're one of them land old raiders, hammers, ain't you? Yeah, those uh, are chaos yeah. land raiders. Yeah, then they're T yeah. nine. And I know someone that plays with two of them at, at chaos land. I know. I yeah, I have a guy I play against fairly regularly. It's a world news player. He runs two chaos land raiders, and it's it's pretty tough to deal with. Um. No, there's a one of the first tournaments I ever went to, or the first convention I ever went to, was in Baltimore in like 2002, maybe three. Uh, and my buddy brought a Deathwing list to a 1500 point termina- uh, tournament, which was three squads of five Terminators, a captain, and three Land Raiders. Oh god! <laughs> he didn't do well, but it was funny. It was it was a lull. It was a meme list. Anyway. Uh, all right. Yeah. Hey, what else, what else you want to talk about? Right. So this is all we got. This is a, a good dump. Um, more yep. stuff's coming out every so day. I can't wait to get the lion out. I can't wait to get the lion, man. I can't wait to get the lion on the table. I Pre-orders think orders are this cool weekend. Stuff. Yep. And this yep. weekend's Warhammer Fest too, right? Is it? Oh, I think I it think is. It. Yeah. Can they say, they said you're actually gonna be able to play the game this weekend. So we should be get a we should get not just from GW but but a, a broader array of you know participants oh, and content no, it's creators. The, it's the end of the month. It's not it's not yet. Well, the... fine, okay. Hey, that's we're we're mid April, so yeah, we got like two, two more, more weeks. weeks. Two more weeks. That's two fine. More weeks. We'll, we'll, no more then. So yeah. All right. Hey, let's uh, call it a short one, but short and sweet. We don't got a whole lot of stuff to talk about other than all this really important stuff we talked about. Yeah, exactly. So. Well, everybody, take that data Cheers. slate, go out there, do what you can, show us, you know, get on the, the next monthly, you know, our next roundup on our main monthly episode. We want to hear your name. We want to see these lists because now we don't have Terminators, 40 Terminator lists, Cheers. unless you do. If you do do it, like we want to know how or why. Uh, so uh, we'll get you on there. And so until next time, this is Bailey from Dankless Wargaming. This is Heath with Team Table Hawaii. Stay loyal, angels.